Jumping directly into the action. Okay. So that's that. Yeah, we already see Jins of Seafire. Why is it so, so quiet? Okay. Okay, so first match, Strife Bros. Paladin against Radu's Patron. And Radu actually picked perfectly because the Patron obviously is like mm, probably the very best matchup against Strife Bros. Paladin here. Yeah, the Ghoul doing a good job. Blocking at least that Master for Battle can come down. On the other hand, there is a blessing of kings, which Strife could eventually put on the mini bot, and that's also what he probably gonna do. I really don't see much alternate options. It's also quite a strong play because usually the ghoul wrath is your board, and instead of wrathing your board, um, ra um, the Strife could actually make it happen that it play the earthquake actually does nothing, or the whatever you call it, earthquake, flame wave, or whatever it is. Nothing, especially because Rado actually doesn't have an execute in his hand, so he will now be forced to actually use the death by to do that. Yeah, execute would have helped. But we also see no equality or consecration in Strife Cross hand, and that will really, really seriously hurt him a lot. Yeah, simply <laughs> because we see Rado always already having in the hand. Yes, exactly that. Patron Ultra Super Inner Rage Double Whirlwind action. Which will also come down now. The Double Whirlwind action can not take place this turn, but that doesn't matter too much. It, it simply comes down next turn, and that's still good enough. The Death Bite hitting simply the Knife Juggler. You don't really need or require the damage right away. So you just do that. And GG. <laughs> I mean. But what is to be said about that, right? I mean, yeah, Ginny, Ginny of Zephyrus, but yeah. The Jins, the Jins. Yeah, Radu will, yeah, perfect card also, just playing this. Ah, uh, do we lose our spectate again? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Should we try to wait? Just imagine there being a 2-4 draw a card <laughs> on, on this side here of the battlefield. Yeah, I mean this, the Mysterious Challenger is nice but not good enough. They will simply be... What will happen? Yeah, Patron attacking... Patron attacking, 2-1 will spawn, then Mysterious Challenger will grow big, Patron will spawn again, Fiery Vorex hitting the um, hitting the defender, um, eventually, even not even that, no actually not, like probably it will be Fiery attacking, defender jumps out, Fiery kills the, um, like Vorex kills this, then there will be a Whirlwind, board fills with Patrons, this will actually go to 7. Uh, one attacks, two attack, and this is gone. All the secrets are gone, and the board is full. Um, Strife could go into four, and GG. Yeah, I won't bother the players now with restarting. We just hope that the next game uh, will be fine again. Because this is like a two turn lethal, basically, if you want to say so. 
um, especially with having the Grom next turn. Yeah, I know it's unpleasant. I know it's unpleasant next 30 seconds, but on the other hand, um, you also have to think about like um, how players actually are feeling in these situations. So Strife Crow is now um, losing the game and I don't want to... <laughs> Like, while he's losing the game, message him, yeah, please, please give me a re-invite or something. Yeah, I know Strifecore is a nice guy and he would not be angry about that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not that we have to bother him. Do we even see if it's over? Or don't we see if it's over? Does it simply get stuck? Um... Okay, guys, we can also just, <laughs> I mean, if it's completely stuck, um, well, let me check. Yeah, I know, I know, we are missing the action, we are missing the action. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Oh, we actually can simply click on it again. Oh, Strife Pro actually has permanent spectate open. Okay. All right, guys. Okay, so we are jumping <laughs> in game two. Yeah, like what I've told you will happen, this, these were probably the things which also happened. Um, it's actually interesting to be mentioned that Strife Crow is also playing the Reno Jackson Warlock. So who, who was playing the Reno Jackson Warlock now? Strife Crow? Xixu? And Nerea. Hmm. And yesterday we also had one guy playing the Reno Jackson Warlock. I'm not convinced and I don't know, like, I know that there is a big Reno Jackson Warlock hype out there, but I can just not, I don't know, it's really that good, I can just, I can just not see it, I can really just not see it. Hmm. Nah, perhaps it is, no idea. Perhaps you should try it out again. I'm not sure. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, I mean, it could increase the face hunter matchup, which was a bad one. And but what else? I mean, it increases the freeze match matchup, I guess. Hmm. It's really that good. You would probably be forced to play a deck only out of singletons. Then again, you could do so. Hmm. Yeah. Not not sure. I will I will check that out. Okay. So um, yeah, we see Radu going what <laughs> the face through it does. Going face. But unfortunate news for the druid. He doesn't have any kind of. Burst. But on the other hand, Strife Crow already has the Reno Jackson in his hand. So that doesn't look that great for Radu. Like, not that great, meaning it's completely bad. <laughs> yeah, it really looks really, really crappy here for Radu. I don't know about the, the face through it. I mean, people where I saw like even some statistics actually rating the face hunter absolute top tier being like one of the strongest, if not the strongest deck, but I can just not get friends with it. Like whenever I play against it, I am thinking, oh, I'm so happy that it's actually not the mid range druid, which actually can outvalue you and burst you down. So once you actually achieve to outlast the early aggression of this druid, you're usually 
well suited. Yeah, so what I'm meaning is if I'm for example Handlock and I'm playing against the Aggro Druid, I'm just thinking, okay, if I only if I only get through the early aggression, then it's simply a win. Whereas usually they simply outvalue you completely. You nearly have no way to actually ever win this. But um, because the Aggro Druid does have not that much value as the Midrange Druid does have, they are actually under immense time pressure. And under immense time pressure meaning the mid normal Midrange Druid has not to win in the early game. It has to win by turn 9. If, like, if it's turn 9 and they win, it's cool, but if they don't win by turn 9, okay, they just do the combo turn 14 or turn 15. But the aggressive druid is actually even forced to do the combo turn 9. So if they don't do that and they don't win by turn 9, probably they won't ever have a combo again, because if they don't uh, combo by turn 9 uh, and win, they can also not simply do nothing because they have no other options, so they need to actually enforce the combo. Um, but if they cannot kill with a combo, that's it. Then they have nothing left. Yeah. That's also one scenario we could perhaps even see here. Okay. What is that? What is this? The card for zero? It's... Uh, what was the reason why it cost zero? Or is it simply wrong? Um. Yeah, it must, must have been wrong, otherwise it would have been lethal, right? Yeah, yeah, it must have been wrong. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the refreshment vendor. Hey guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, the refreshment vendor. I'm not too sold on him, but. I just saw, it's just, I, I, it's just cool to see all these new cards in the Highlanders. Suddenly, like, you know, this is like horrible, but in a Highlander, who knows, right? I mean, who knows? In a Highlander, like, there are a lot of cards which actually can make the cut, which otherwise couldn't. I'm not saying that I would consider playing him even in a Highlander, but... Mm, I'm just saying, like, cards which appear to be quite bad on first glance could, uh, could eventually make sense in a Highlander deck, for example. For example, that deck, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so rather here... Combo would have killed, right? Or not? 247 and um, 1327. Um, 1327, uh, 26. So uh, Combo would have killed. Yeah. Combo would have killed. And does this kill too? Um, 357, 13, 15, 16. No, that doesn't kill. <laughs> that doesn't kill, and that's pretty convenient because, um, yeah. If it doesn't kill, then there is Reno Jackson and Healbot and Refreshment Window. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Surprise, surprise. Uh, refreshment Window into Reno Jackson. Uh. So what is this? Like the one player says, I want to buy a refreshment and the other player says, yeah, I, I want to buy a refreshment too. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking to make sense of that card, but whatever. Okay. So, um, what is it? 20 against 18. There is a gorilla, um, like a gorilla blocking. Maganus is basically taunt. There's healboard. 
4, 6, 8, 11, 13. No cards in the opponent's hand. Yeah, my gun is like the card you want to drop here. My gun is no attack, I guess. There's really not much else. Uh, we're actually knowing that your opponent. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. I mean, actually, knowing that your opponent doesn't have a handle for Maganis, you can just play Maganis. I'm not. I mean, you can also do this. And it's here zero mana, Doctor Boom. <laughs> here. And Dr. Boom would have been nice, but there is the answer, the direct answer. Can you tell me why it always bugs out in the final turns, by the way? We need to restart, right? We, we already know that it will, simply, it will simply stay like it is. So let's see. Um, yeah, don't blame it on me. Okay. Ah. We we ask him for a reinvite after that game. As I said, I, I usually don't want to ask for reinvites <laughs> if if the situation is not And and we also see all cards in Rato's hand, right? Okay, so that actually makes it a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I should be, uh, <laughs> I should be a little bit, um, how do you say, uh, neutral, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I mean, then again, I, I'm pretty neutral, because I like Strive Pro very much, too, so, yeah. Okay, so, we see Strive Pro send, uh, well, perfect, right, and also, uh, actually, very, very important to be mentioned is this Ragnaros here. So, um, yeah, because people usually don't play that, but Strive for actually plays it. I also don't mind playing it sometimes in my Druid. It's good acceleration and can go face, and it's actually not that unlikely that you're ahead as a Druid. And Ragnaros is also really huge, dealing damage for free, without being, for free meaning, without being harmed himself. Okay. So yeah, keeping the Nassus, that makes a lot of sense. And lore, it's it's great. But uh, I mean, oh, the living roots. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. I mean, pretty pretty good business. Yeah, pretty good business. Uh, we also have good business on Rado's side. What do you do? You can play your entire hand nearly. Um, what do you do here? I'm definitely use something the question is what something hey seriously guys i like to play the danassus into the sh shade case is possible yeah i like that double innovate bam bam uh, no what, what did i say danassus into shade no, no i mean knife juggling into shade i don't mind knife juggling into shade here perhaps even double innovate double innovate knife juggler shade payum payum super good right yeah it's super good let's do that Juggle into shade. It's also possible to play. Um, yeah, double innovate is cool. Oh, uh, he plays the uh, juggle into the Nasus. Yeah, it's okay too. 
I like the other one better, but it's preference, I guess. Nah, I think it's preference. Both plays have their pros and their cons. So with the one play, you actually stay with the um, with the coin instead of the innovate. But on the other hand, you um, have one more um, counter, like one more plus one plus one on the shade. So you actually gain plus one plus one on the shade and one face damage. And for that, you have like the coin instead of the innovate in the hand. I think that's a fair trade-off. Yeah, so now for example, yeah, instead of like innervating Lothep potentially, you could have simply coined out Lothep, trading the shade into the aspirant going face, and then forcing Strifecrow to actually either ignore the shade and let him grow again, or to shapeshift him, but then probably not having any other drop. Rado could even do it here. No, actually no, the shade would have also already been 4-4. So actually, yeah, I mean now now Rado has to swipe because of the situation. Um he actually encounters now it's not that easy i'm just saying like with the cards being drawn probably it would have been better but you never know right but with the cards being drawn now it would have been coined into lothep the four four shade would have attacked the two three the shade would have been four two this would have still been two three and strife would have actually had a completely dead turn um and then the shoik would have grown to five three this would have also attacked and the Lothar would have attacked for entirety of 12 life and that would have been insta, insta GG. Now it's simply not, so um, that could have probably cost him the game. In With the cards being drawn, I mean we never know, but uh, it's just interesting um, how these things develop, like these little decisions at the start of games here for example I mean at the start of the game it was super difficult um, I don't think it was super difficult to evaluate whether you should at least uh, use like two acceleration I think with this hand it will, and also being accurate druid it was pretty clear that you should use acceleration and probably plenty of it so the only question was simply which two cards you would actually like to play and the knife juggler really really nicely aligned into any of those other minions because the knife was very likely to hit the 1-1 and then Strife would have been forced, which he also has been, uh, to use hero power to uh, forfeit life and all these things. Um, also, as a side note, Strife Pro's draw was just horrible, so um, yeah, he basically drew a completely blank. That's, that's really, yeah, that was really ugly for him. Because like, if he would have drawn anything decent, it would have probably still been able to stabilize. Because let's just imagine he would have drawn anything which could have actually handled Lothap. Then now he would have been able to play Force of Nature, killing this, this and this. And then playing actually Dr. Boom. So perhaps still being in the game. Perhaps. Yeah, but as, as it now is, uh, well, obviously now it's simply over. There is no way to... <laughs> to um, prevent the inevitable. There simply isn't. What I'm saying is there is no way to prevent lethal. I hope I'm right about that because if Strife Cronal prevents lethal. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so. Um, yeah, that's a 2 1 for Rado. Yeah, but again, like, there are two, two minions at the beginning of the game, and the one was Aspirant and the other one was Shade. It was just a question. Like, do you evaluate um, innovate over coin so much that you are that it's worse to forfeit one one on the board on the shade and one damage into the face, just to having this innovate instead of a coin, and and that also without having any cards in the hand, so the mana is even less important. 
and then it snowballs, it can snowball, and so in this case we saw it actually snowballing. So suddenly this important plus one plus one was not there. Plus one plus one meaning that you actually deal one more damage every turn two. Okay, Paladin against Paladin. Yeah, you see Secret Paladin against Rados mid range, late range Paladin or mid late. All that works is after the Mysterious Challenger came down, Rado has time to handle. If the Mysterious Challenger gets handled, usually it's over. There is a tier in for drink though, so this will be. Um, yeah, this will actually get really interesting. We see Perfect Curve from Rado. But there is the master. Without the master, it would have been pretty bad for Strife Crew. But the master being of uttermost importance, being by far the strongest cards, which uh, the strongest card which could have been drawn here. So, yeah, big, big, big ownage here, yeah. big ownage, big, big tempo ownage, I mean we saw Secret Keeper coming down as a 2-3, the attack is good, Master for battle attacking for free, everything very strong. Okay, now there's kind of counter movement, we already see the consecration here, <laughs> double consecration, yeah, and obviously the consecration is also something which will come down here. There's no reason not to play the Consecration, it's the only card Rado can actually play efficiently here. So that's also what he should do. And the damage actually doesn't <laughs> stop. I'm really wondering who who's the aggressive Paladin here. I mean, we see here a Divine Favor, but Strifer has like... We see also Strifer having 6 cards in the hand with a Divine Favor. On the other hand, Rado being the mid-late range Paladin having like 3 cards in his hand. And we also see Striker already at 15 life against Rado with 28, but he's like the, supposed to be the very late Paladin. This is supposed to be the fast one. So, yeah, it's, it's very rare. It's very rare to experience something like this, I guess. Divine Favor are also being a completely dead card in the process. But yeah, so now Rado actually ran... Yeah kind of out of gas if you want to say so and the keyboard not doing a lot for the pressure going on okay knife checkler but probably well mysterious challenger it's to be mentioned that the the event here from the beginning didn't make any appearance and now the one street zombie show is actually extremely suitable for the 2-1 look at these trades 1-3 into the 2-1 perfect this gets avenge gets them peacekeeper perfect this 1-1 one, one, uh, uh, weapon which actually killed every turn something which actually really realized all the four attacks uh, now actually kills even the last one so even this is beneficial look just look at the beauty i mean <laughs> And yeah, this will be able to, and, and, and this gets a plus one, plus one. I mean, it's really, really good what's happening here for Radu. Also Tyrion coming later. It's also not the best. Ooh, master pickup. That's huge. Like, really huge. We would say if there wouldn't be a consecration in Radu's hand. But in general, this is a huge pickup. Um... We see also Strife Pro actually not willing to use a weapon beforehand, but actually 
rather wanting to decrease a charge. This is due to the nature of Harrison Jones, like he's probably afraid of Harrison Jones, and he's saying, okay, um, it doesn't really matter, like, this will replace my weapon anyway, so I can as well simply protect myself from Harrison Jones without nearly any risks involved. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. <laughs> this is pretty bad. Uh, what's going on? Yeah. Ah, this is this is so unlucky. This is really so unlucky. It's really so unlucky because now this gets eaten by Chow and so on and so on. This is really like not the not the situation you want to be in. Yeah, it's uh, it's really not the situation where you want to be in. I'm really wondering what like Radu's play will be actually. I mean, this this should probably eat this, and you don't want to do this, so you probably would like to play Lionel Hands to be honest. Yeah, on <laughs> yeah, okay, no, sorry about this. It's like <laughs> it's like <a laughs> like the might coming down down on the zombie show. Did you just see it? I mean. Boom, be healed, zombie chow. Yeah, for one. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's that's what you should do, probably. So, Murloc, Noit. Murloc, Noit, guys. And it is <laughs> always the Merc Eye. Always. I mean, are you kidding me? Is it like the, the fourth Merc Eye Rado just got here? I think it's the fourth one, yeah. You already got like three of them out of four. Possible. No, yeah, blessings. There are, however, however, no gins of Z fire <laughs> to be seen. <laughs> okay, so double true silver, a lot of weapon charges. Tyrion being pretty decent. Yeah, he's making. Uh, oh, the Murloc. You should not attack the Murloc. Why should you? What's the reason to attack the Murloc? The Murloc is a two four. The Murloc is not important. The Murloc is doing nothing. The Murloc is running against this. This should go face. Nah, not the 1-1. One, one. Not the 1-1. One, one. The, the only way to win this matchup now is by tempoing your opponent down. You're already out of cards. You have no means to win. The only chance is to hope and to pray and just to go face. I know it's not face hunter, but that's like what you do here. I can see that Strife Crow tries to play around um, around the quartermaster, but the thing is, Strife Crow will lose here, even if the Rado wouldn't have had the quartermaster. Or I mean, in fact, he doesn't, right? But like even without, um, yeah, e even without <laughs> Strife Crow will simply lose here. So, I really think the only way is just to go face everything and pray, hope that Radu really only... I don't even know what Radu should have in the hand, but that's really like the only hope. So, what's Radu's play here? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, some kind of weapons. Weapons something. Weapons hitting Tyrion. Uh, what? Why, why did you just save? Screenshot. Ah, yes. I don't think that was supposed to be like that. But yeah, so yeah, that's that's correct, whatever it was.
Yeah, the commentary is now a little bit there. Like, I'm always like... It's pretty... I mean, okay, the Mysterious Stranger was probably the best draw Strife would have drawn. But there is simply... Yeah, I mean, we will see, right? We will see. I mean, Strife Group does have the 5 2 weapon online, so it's it's not. He's not auto dead, but it doesn't look that great. This adventure, what was it? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does Rado have here? It's 7 damage to the face. Potentially. Or outvaluing, that's also an option. Yeah, you have all kind of options here, but probably simply going face and killing your opponent within the next three turns. Seems to be really feasible. This goes face. Mm, do you play defender? Then you cannot quartermaster, so no, you probably don't. You can probably just... Hmm? Yeah, you can probably just reinforce on Quartermass. I like that. I like that very much. No, interface. What? What's there? Yeah, of course, yeah. Interface. Yeah, Quartermaster, attack interface. Winning within the next two turns. That sounds like a plan. I'm really curious whether you don't even want to also drop your BGH. Okay, that's the plan, yeah. I don't mind that, that's good as well. Mm, pretty much everything is good at this point. Yeah, <laughs> the genius of seafarers. I also have to say, like, from the games we actually saw, uh, <laughs> yeah, how do I say, like, underperform? Yeah, I don't know whether you could say underperform, but okay, so that goes for a 3-0, uh, 3-1 actually, yeah, for Radu. Okay, um, cool. I will give you back to the production and then, uh, what is this? And yeah, we see each other after the break. Uh, break being Radu against um, Radu against Sixo. The yeah, the match of the day because it's the, the sizing and um, final match. So see you after the break, guys.